Hi, this is Glenn Woods, and we're here in our Palm Harbor, Florida studio. And today I am doing something that I don't do very often. I'm making mugs. And Keith said, wow, those are huge mugs, but we fired a cone 11, so they shrink quite a bit. Um, so anyway, I don't usually make mugs. That's Keith's department. Uh, but when I do make a mug, I put the handles on a little different than he does. Uh, this is um, a crystalline piece, so this hasn't been taken off the riser yet. So this whole piece will be removed. But his handle is extruded, and what he does is he makes a variety of mugs and he'll pick a style, and he'll do a series of those, and then he'll make the handle to kind of fit that shape and size of mug, set those aside for a little while, and then attach those separately. Um, but uh, I make my mugs, and I really don't try to make them look alike. So for people who are looking for sets, they, that really doesn't make them happy. But anyway, so I have, a variety of shapes and sizes and instead of extruding my handle I will attach my handle and pull it right on the piece and I used to do that by attaching it here at the top and then pulling the handle and nothing wrong with that but I saw um, a mug at an art fair and I just loved the handle and I asked the artist if they would be okay with me um, applying that same style to my mugs and he's like well you know I got it from somebody else so um, anyway, I just think it's nice. It's a nice courtesy to ask somebody if you're going to kind of borrow from their style. And he was perfectly fine with it. So I'm going to show you today how we attach these. So I just basically cut out squares and then I roll it into um, little logs and then I'll cut it uh, to the appropriate size. And then I will taper one end and make the other end flat. So I, I get this carrot shaped. Uh, handle and then I flatten it like this so this is what the handle looks like beforehand and then I tap it on the side of a corner uh, that kind of resembles the corner that I'm going to be attaching it to so first I will score this and uh, my friend Martha Grover loves to, to slip first and then score but I'm going to score slip score and slip. So I score that side, that surface, and I kind of guesstimate where it's going to attach. And this has a fairly large attachment uh, surface, so it could be anywhere in there. And then I'm going to score this. I'm going to apply some slip. And this is a paper clay slip that I use. Also, uh, a gift from Martha Grover. She gave us a recipe that she uses. All right, and so there is a flat side and a rounded side to this. And I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to put the rounded side down. Okay, so I wiggle it back and forth. And as I'm pushing, I'm making the, the section that's attached to the mug a little thicker and fatter. So I have clay to push up against the piece. And I'm going to really work this in really well before I start pulling it. And normally I'll, I'll go over to the sink and pull. So I have a lot of extra steps that you don't really need, um, meaning walking around the studio, but I don't mind that. But what I did here is I brought a bucket of water over here. So I'm gonna work this in all the way around so that that is nice and smooth and blended in before I start pulling. I don't want to have to worry about that part later. Okay. All right, so that's what it looks like. You can see there's a little bit of a thin spot here. Well, that's the first thing we're going to do is pull that thin spot out. So I'm going to go up here and just kind of blend that in, make the carrot nice and smooth. And I want to end up with a fairly round tapered coil or carrot shape with no real flatness to it. Once I get that nice and smooth, I'm going to start flattening it out and I pull it this way um, on one side and then on the other side and that's so that I don't get a thin spot on the handle on just one side. Because if you look at my hand when I push this here, 
it's thinner where the point fingers come together. So if I were just to pull it this way, it would be thinner on this spot, side and rounder on that side. So I do this way and then this way. All right, so once I get it about the right thickness, I'm going to add a little spine to this piece. I love the way the spine kind of draws your eye around the handle. Some people will put three grooves, some people will put no grooves, or one nice divot in the middle, but I personally like a groove on this side and a groove on that side. That's just my own personal style. Once I get the grooves in, then I'll continue to pull it for length and also to thin the handle. You don't want it too clunky. And then you want to, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm holding this so that I'm pulling it straight down. And I'm constantly checking to make sure that the handle is coming out perpendicular from the mug itself. Okay, it's easy to accidentally pull it so the mug, the handle is angled. You don't want to do that unless you're going for a special style. Okay, so now, I know that looks really long for a handle, but uh, I like this style handle. And um, Keith is holding the camera. Could you give me that sponge over there? This one? Yeah. I thought I had everything set over here. Anyway, the, before I attach the handle, I want to remove all the extra slip on here. Just to reduce the stickiness. Okay, and then I'm going to put a tiny bit of slip where I had scored that piece before. And there's already enough moisture in the handle. I don't have to add any to the handle. And so this is, I don't know if you can see this, but what I do is sometimes I'll just let the handles dry this way because I want this angle, you know, where the handle is attached. I, I want that to be closer to the mug. So I'll kind of sponge that down and then I'll hold it like this and as I tip the mug up I will kind of eyeball it making sure it's nice and straight and then commit to the attachment point so I might want to push that up a bit. What I'm looking for here is I want a nice continuous line here and a nice smooth line there and this little extra piece of handle so many people will just trim it off but I really like the way that line continues on the mug and it doesn't seem to get in your way when you're using the mug so I just leave it there um, I might uh, as it's drying I might take my sponge and smooth off any kind of sticky marks that are there really focus on the attachment point make sure it's nice and attached this style of handle because I've pulled it here there's a lot of tension pulling that handle away so I do want to release some of that tension by just pushing it right here and you know just double checking the curves if this curve is too square just pull it gently this way or even up this way. Now I like to dry these upside down and I'll just keep an eye out on them. I'll take a, uh, a brush and brush away any extra slip and maybe some of the sticky marks but those sticky marks can easily be taken care of with a sponge later um, so don't worry about that. Your primary focus is the curvature of the handle. You want it, the eye is naturally going to go inside here so you want that to be nice and clean. All right, so there you go. There's a handle, thanks.